Hello. I like rusty spoons. <laughs> I like to touch them. <laughs> the feeling of rust against my salad fingers is almost orgasmic. <laughs> I must find the perfect spoon. Hello there, young child. I'm here to inquire about your spoons. Might I ask where you keep the spoons? <coughs> I see. Then I must leave. But first, I'd like to caress this rusty kettle. Oh! <laughs> and might I say, you are looking rather splendid this evening. <laughs> this is Hubert Cumberdale, Marjorie Stewart Baxter, and this is Jeremy Fisher. Say, say hello. I wonder what you taste like. Marjorie Stuart Baxter, you taste like sunshine dust. <laughs> Ugh! Hubert Cumberdale, you taste like soot and poo. I've, I've got a fish in the oven, <laughs> if, if anyone's interested. Hello, Nabila, come and tell you, Keskilia. It's right at the back. I, I can't thank you enough for go go go. Oh. <laughs> I like it when the red water comes out. I like it when the red water comes out of the mine. Oh, yeah! Somewhere over the rainbow, way, way up high, there's a land that I heard of once. Hubert Cumberdale. 
Fancy seeing you here. of nettles. Oh, what, what, what's this rather queer looking contraption? Y you can be called a nettle carrier. There you go. weary legs. I, I, I'll give you a little hand if you're feeling rather fatigued, Mil Milford Cubicle. It is that comfortable. Say, would you like a warm glass of milk, Milford Cubicle? Hello. Today, I'm going to try and find France, but because I've always wanted to go there. Boy has been watching me for a while now. I think I'll find France another day.
gathering today, little sister. Really? Ah. Uh, I just want to give you a big stroke. Ugh. You've gone flat, little sister. Uh, and you're all gooey. I shan't play with you again until you've had a wash. for the fingers. <sighs> what, what, what's this? to go home now. Post-haste. Pardon? Well, could you tell him that I am holding a grand picnic today? We've got gypsy creams, derby scones, admiral's pie. Uh ooh. Stop scratching your basket belly, said, said Mary Mandolin. How rude. I, I've been uh, disconnected. Uh, oh, uh, why, if it isn't... Um, but Barbara, Logan Price. I've 
made you a friend hat. There'll be fog on the shore tonight, bosun. Hmm? So beautiful. <laughs> it, it, it is your big day. The guests should be here any time. Seems our first guest has arrived. Uh, but would you like some confectionery? <coughs> How does your Loganberry crumble taste? Simply delicious, replied Mabel. Uh, I, I must say, you're a well-mannered young lady. I, I, I'd like to elect you as my new playmate. That's a pretty looking frock on your body. But, but it looks awfully dirty. My tummy box feels broken. <coughs> Would you like some peas pudding? Peas pudding hot, peas pudding cold, peas pudding in the pot, nine days old. <laughs> I think he likes spoons too. What's wrong? Mr. Finger, do you not like my mouth words? Naughty man. Come down from there at once, Hubert Cumberdale. You're just a sticky river. <laughs> oh. Hello? Uh, who's there? Jeremy Fisher. I thought you were out fighting the Great War. I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't understand that. You seem to have adopted a strange dialect. Is this a present for me, Mr. Fisher? Ah, oh, my very own. Horace Horse Collar. Oh. You hold a welcoming texture. A pleasure for the tips. Uh, oh. Where have you gotten to? Oh, oh. 
Nay, nay. You're all ready for the big race. H Horace horse collar. We're, we're counting on you. Has it been since I've seen your chops? Uh, there's probably enough water in here to wash my petticoat. P pardon? I, I, I don't understand. What, what is this? Uh, no, this isn't true. You've got the wrong bloke, Squire. Wash those bad thoughts away. Uh, Horace, I think you'd better take me home. <gasps> Jeremy Fisher, I thought you were out fighting the Great War. I'd like a word with you. I'm not one for accusations, but this one's cast iron. I've seen you tailgating my daughter with aspirations of deflowering her rose. I don't make mistakes, comrade. This one's textbook. All the delights of your flavour. You're absolutely right, Marjorie. Uh, the floor sugar does taste rather queer I in this area. We ought to make a record of our findings. Hubert Cumberdale, uh, you've been rather busy. <gasps> What, what, what's this? Uh, c could it be? Uh, G Kenneth? Back from the Great War? Uh, my very own little Kenneth. Uh, uh, back on shore leave to see his older brother. It was frightfully rude of you blokes uh, to leave for the Great War without me. Come inside and we'll fix you a nice hot bath. Lock up your daughters tonight, General. There'll be trouble in the maiden's quarters. Maybe you can come and tuck me in tonight, <laughs> sailor. Stop that. The brave Kenneth, ba back from the Great War to spread his wild oats. Uh, I hope you like sand. Oh, you're feeling a little sleepy. This wooden dent trail should help uh, if one's feeling rather slumberous. 
<laughs> I've been keeping myself rather busy here, uh, working every shift I can. I, I used to sing uh, at all the functions, uh, from Croxley Heath to Cowden Beef. Would you care for a spot of ruby tea? by the riverside many summers ago. Another vanilla crown, uh, said brother from the Great War. Well, you've yet to eat your beef strong enough. Uh, well, back, back you go then. Back, back to the ghastly trenches. <laughs> I only ask that our creator return you unspoiled from the cruel hand of war. We'll meet again, don't know where, don't know when. <laughs> We'll meet again, don't know where, don't know when, but I know, no, you're doing it all wrong, you're not playing in the right key. Hello. I, I like to listen to my radio. I, I, I listen to the war. And sometimes, if I'm an early bird, I listen to Croxley at breakfast. I, I can't find a clear station, Roger. a little uppity when he hasn't had his sustenance. Oh, wh wh what a hideous sound. Have I happened upon an unpleasant broadcast? What what's this about, Roger? I, I, I do hope it doesn't concern me. <coughs> unpleasant frequencies about. I think I'll sit this one out in the safety cupboard. Tittle tittle. 
de tum de tu, te tiddle de tap de tea. Where are you skipping off to today, Penny Pigtails? I'm heading off the market for some raspberry jam. I'll sell you no such thing, said the market trader. Your legs are made of cotton and they're far too long. <laughs> Oh, all is not lost, Penny Pigtails. You've found yourself a special hair. beautiful together, so happy, a gay little quintet gently singing in the breeze. There were three in the bed and the little one said, roll over. Scrub that muck off at once, Hubert Cumberdale. Uh, I'll have no dirty immigrants in my house. such frequencies at this hour, upsetting my insides and worrying my mind. I've a good mind to show you the door. It's a rotten job. I shan't, I can't, and I won't. wonderful time. Uh, the trenches are decorated with flowers and pleasantries. I hope you get well soon. With love from the Great War. Daddy, I'm bothered! <laughs> 
y you'd better have a good reason for all this rumpus, Mr. Branches. Daddy, look, look what happened to my end bits, Daddy. Oh, someone's got a parley. We'll have to get some bubble trumps and vinegar on there before it falls off. I'm cold out here, Daddy. I'm cold. Well, you'd better get a move on and start growing out of those branches if you want to come inside. <laughs> That's not fair, Daddy. <laughs> oh. I feel my day of reckoning may be approaching. I suppose I'd better alert the correspondents. Bring help briskly. Mother always said the scarlet fever would be my final departure. yearned for this day. I, I never thought she would arrive. Bottles, nappies, smiles and we. To my heart you found the key. Baby, Yvonne is born today. The angels say she's here to stay. Ah, oh, you've got your mother's eyes. And she was a fair maiden too, make no mistake. I shan't be able to attend the war today, as I am still feeling a little under the weather. Heavens to Betsy, what now? You're supposed to be doing your exercise, Yvonne. A lethargic child is a servant to the beast. Heads, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, heads, shoulders. I'm going to be jolly cross with you in a minute. I think we've been given a duff one, Marjorie. My condition is worsening, Yvonne. I'm afraid caring for you might be out of my current grasp. Ah, that's a shame. You were doing a first-rate job. I'll make some appointments. Home. Needed. For. Meddlesome child. Good old Auntie Bainbridge has agreed to take care of you whilst Daddy is enfeebled. She'll she'll make a fanciful young gentlewoman of you, and she'll have you in farming. Now, 
Did you remember to pack your trestle table? Well, it's too late to go back now. Anti Bainbridge. Now there's a rosy rascal. <laughs> Give us a hug, you old dame. I remember you'd sing me a shilling's worth and then smack my bottom raw for being a fussy fidget pot. All in faded days. Well, um, I'm just here to, um, oh, to clean your windows. That's right, I think. Yes, I think I must be. <whistles> Them's a bit mucky, missus. Should be one for Saturday lads, really. Don't qualm, mind. I'll chuck you this in for notes. polite if you took a hot bath a Milford cubicle you're a bit pooey Hubert Cumberdale oh them's trousers a bit posh sunshine and how old are you going to be Do grow up fast. Who on earth could that be? It's far too early for guests. Who the devil are you? See what the fingers make of all this. Oh, you, you appear to be free of all information. Uh, I, I would advise you, young Binnikins, not to associate yourself with such an ignorant, textualist pole. Are you Hubert's birthday stick? No answer. As I expected. Come on, Sludgeworth. I won't ask you again. Well, someone's a saggy slumber chaps. Hold on. This might get your gears in motion. Smirk. Oh, 
What a day you've chosen to fall under. Horace, you're in charge until I get back. Don't you crumple your face up at me, Hubert Jason Cumberdale. We've a duty to fetch the doctor, since our wandering guest has fallen ill. Now sit tidy and wait for the GP. He is trusty old Dr. Papanak. <laughs> Just here for the old once over, Doc. <laughs> well, I, I, I suppose you'll be checking me for nimpers and camel spots. <laughs> oh. Oh. Switch my knickers. We're awfully late. I must have slept for six Mondays. Christ in staples. Uh, Horace. I said you could bring one friend. <gasps> Mr. Cubicle, uh, what's become of your outer casing? Your, your butter hollow structure. You foul creatures. Which one of you wretched beasts consumed Mr. Cubicle's flesh? Oh, there'll be heavens to pay. Go on, bugger off, the bloody lot of you. Get out of my house. You again. I bet you're the ringleader here, aren't you? You should feel a great shame for this outcome, sir. A great shame. Oh, I, I, I see you've invited the whole platoon. Is this remaining seat reserved for me? Ah! <laughs> 
Uh, uh, for me? Oh, uh, I thought you'd all forgotten. Hello. Today, I'd like to thank you for one million little tiny billiard people that I get to keep in my little billiard box. Ah, oh, Hubert Cumberdale, I haven't seen you for 23 years. <laughs> I'm really happy. Ah, he's got his granddad's teeth. Stuart Baxter. When you disobey me, this is what it comes to. Oh, I suppose you find this amusing, do you, Hubert Cumberdale? You're the best behaved, Jeremy Fisher. You, you, you'll be first in the bathtub tonight. Oh, don't give me those tears now. You'll never be a real boy, Hubert Cumberdale. You're about ready to grow up a little, don't you? Dream boat. What's your number? Sugar cheeks. Thunder thighs. Ladies and gentlemen, a new, improved, a Hubert Cumberdale. The real boy. I just went to dunk on the rooftops for all 15. I'm fresh and ready for life. <laughs> oh. 
I'm a big boy now. They grow up so fast, don't they? <laughs> and he's already running about and playing with all the other little girls and boys. <sighs> I've surely been blessed by, by the soft hand of our great provider. Oh, you're just a glass brother. You wouldn't understand. You're a stupid boy. Y yes, Mother. I am a stupid boy. I'm sorry, Mother. Fetch me a bowl of porridge. Yes, Glass Mother. Hey, he won't let me pass it. He keeps on. What a weak little squirt you are. He keeps on. Stop it. He's doing it. Look at him. Look Come look on, he's weakly doing. bones. Pass mother the porridge. I think you want her to starve. I'd rather starve than sit here and watch this pathetic display. You'll forever just be a lonely reflection. It's not fair. I I've been in here for too long. I, I, I want to come home now. Those khaki spider fingers aren't going anywhere. Andrew Hans. <gasps> what, what a horrible thing to say. Don't worry, new, improved Hubert Cumberdale, the real boy. I know of another entrance. Why is Glass Brother so mean, Mr. Fingers? He was raised under the beast's sun. Morning, wet legs. Thought you'd slip in the back door, did you? Uh, uh, I must ask that you step aside. I absolutely shan't. Puddle meddling is punishable by a stern rasping. Rasp. Rasp, rasp. Rasp. Stop, stop rasping. Hand full of Ordex powder. Brown pebbles. Half cup of spider milk. Speckled huckleberry leaf. But, 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 Glass Mother, uh, you know the speckled huckleberry leaf makes my tummy box all bilious. Uh, I, I don't want another fever. You'll eat what I tell you to. Don't make me come through that mirror and poke out your eyes. Now get it down, ya. Yeah. Mr. Fingers, I'll clean it up. Ah, you're a good lad. 
who are you talking to? Why, Hubert Cumberdale, of course. <gasps> oh, hello there, little boy. <laughs> He's my real life flesh boy. The most beautiful boy in the world. you ought to have stolen my little flesh boy. Get your eyes from my chest. Get your nose out of the dirt. You fungus rats and wooden pigs. You pigs and hills of your first born. I'll scatter the pigs of your brother on the balls. Oh, shitty little bugger. I'll have your eyes for crows food. I'll have your arms for cricket stumps. Can't have a fucking chuckle. Just wait until your father gets. 